Hi guys, welcome to my newest video. Thank you for clicking on it. I hope you all are well. Today we are going to do a devotional, um, taking this devotion out of the One Year Through the Bible devotional. It is titled Touchdown. Let's get started. It says, if you follow football, you know that the game has seen a lot of changes over the past decade. Of all the changes, though, the worst one has to be the new attitudes of many who play. These players often act cocky, intimidating, and unsportsmanlike. In this set of prophecies, Amos takes aim at cockiness and unfettered bravado. Arrogant warriors, beware. Jehovah is not impressed. Amos's other prophecies in this reading contain clues that Jehovah doesn't always respect what we do. Note, for example, what Jehovah can do with a mere shepherd and fig grower. Second, mark Jehovah's words towards some upper class types who exploit the poor while giving extra tithes and sacrifices. It's kind of sobering. So we're going to read Amos chapter 1 verse 1 to Amos chapter 2 verse 16. So let me bring that up here. Amos chapter 1. The words of Amos who was among the sheep raisers from Tekoa, which he received in vision concerning Israel, in the days of King Uzziah of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam son of Joash the king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. He said, Jehovah will roar out of Zion, and he will raise his voice out of Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds will mourn, and the summit of Carmel will dry up, this is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Damascus and for four, I will not reverse it, because they threshed Gilead with iron threshing sledges. So I will send a fire upon the house of Hazael, and it will consume the fortified towers of Ben-Hadad. I will break the bars of Damascus. I will destroy the inhabitants from Bikath avon and the one ruling from Beth-Eden. And the people of Syria will go as exiles to Kir, says Jehovah. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Gaza, and for four, I will not reverse it, because they took a whole group of exiles to hand them over to Edom. So I will send a fire onto the wall of Gaza, and it will consume her fortified towers. I will destroy the inhabitants from Ashdod, and the one ruling from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remaining Philistines will perish, says the Sovereign Lord Jehovah. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Tyre, and for four, I will not reverse it, because they handed over a whole group of exiles to Edom, and because they did not remember the covenant of brothers. So I will send a fire onto the wall of Tyre, and it will consume her fortified towers. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Edom, and for four, I will not reverse it, because he pursued his own brother with the sword, and because he refused to show mercy. In his anger he keeps tearing them apart relentlessly and he remains furious with them continually. So I will send a fire into Teman, and it will consume the fortified towers of Basra. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of the Ammonites, and for four, I will not reverse it, because they ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead to widen out their own territory. So I will set fire to the wall of Rabbah, and it will consume her fortified towers, with a war cry in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of storm wind. 
and their king will go into exile together with his princes, says Jehovah. Chapter 2 This is what Jehovah says, For three revolts of Moab, and for four, I will not reverse it, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom for lime. So I will send a fire into Moab, and it will consume the fortified towers of Kiraoth. Moab will die amid an uproar, with a war cry, with the sound of a horn. I will remove the ruler from her midst, and kill all her princes along with him, says Jehovah. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Judah, and for four, I will not reverse it, because they rejected the law of Jehovah and because they did not keep his regulations. But the same lies their forefathers followed have led them astray. So I will send a fire into Judah, and it will consume the fortified towers of Jerusalem. This is what Jehovah says. For three revolts of Israel and for four, I will not reverse it, because they sell the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. They trample the heads of the lowly into the dust of the earth, and they block the path of the meek. A man and his father have relations with the same girl, profaning my holy name. They stretch out next to every altar on garments they seized as security for a loan, and the wine they drink at the house of their gods was obtained from those they find. But it was I who annihilated the Amorite before them who was as tall as the cedars and as strong as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots below. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, and I made you walk through the wilderness forty years to take possession of the land of the Amorite. I raised up some of your sons as prophets, and some of your young men as Nazarites. Is this not so, O people of Israel? declares Jehovah. But you kept giving the Nazarites wine to drink, and you commanded the prophets, You must not prophesy. So I will crush you in your place, just as a wagon loaded with cut grain crushes what is under it. The swift one will have no place to flee, the strong one will not retain his power, and no warrior will escape with his life. The bowman will not stand his ground, the swift of foot will not escape, and the horsemen will not escape with his life. Even the most courageous among the warriors will flee naked in that day, declares Jehovah. Okay. Television and movies bombard us with heroes and heroines who define death, or excuse me, who defy death, and all foes with a huge arsenal of skill, tools, intelligence, luck, and bravado. Because of their incredible fortune, they appear to fear nothing. Many people try to model their lives after these fake images, even though their heroes don't exist in real life. They try to be like these cellophane gods, tough, indestructible, and fearless. But Jehovah is not impressed with skill or bravado. He says that even the best, most skilled, and toughest people will be terrified when his judgment comes. And it will come. Don't be swayed by the self-assured rhetoric of those who think they can make it through life without Jehovah. Don't let them lead you to conceit. Don't trust in your own brain power, skill, or bravado. Jehovah fears no one, and one day all people will fear him. That is it for our devotion today. I hope you all were able to get something out of this. I am so grateful for all of your support. Thank you for watching this video. If you're not subscribed to me, I would appreciate you doing so. It's free. And hit that notification bell if you haven't. That way you will be aware of when I do upload content. 
and I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever and wherever you're watching this. Love and hugs. Bye, guys.